There we go. So, hello everyone. I'm Paul Hieronymus. I am the uh, uh, Technology Director for the uh, North Ridgeville City Schools and uh, Vice Chairman of the Ohio Distance Learning Association. Uh, we are thrilled to be able to bring our, our team, the team from uh, uh, New Zealand to our group. And I know I did it wrong again, I'm sure, in the pronunciation. And uh, so One day, Paul, one day. <laughs> one day I'm going to get it. But, uh, you know, the, the important part is that they, they're bringing some amazing content uh, for you to uh, have and share. I, as I mentioned, I am recording the session and we will post this to the Ohio DOA um, YouTube channel. So we encourage you to share that video uh, link with your uh, colleagues and friends. So with that, I'm gonna just turn this over to Jenna to just take it over. Awesome, thank you so much, Paul. Guys, we are so excited that you are here with us today, um, coming at you live from all of our respective homes because we all can't go outside. Um, but basically our goal for today is we really wanna partner with all of you to provide strong resources for the next couple of months um, so that you are able to communicate and reach students and still deliver content in a really meaningful way. So as you can see on my screen, which hopefully everyone can see, can I get a thumbs up? Cool. So what we're going to talk about today is bringing distance learning to life, specifically utilizing New Zella. Um, I'm sure a lot of folks on the line, we've got New ZLA, New Zela, it's pronounced a whole lot of ways, but you can now go back to all of your friends and say it is officially New Zella rhymes with umbrella. Uh, so first and foremost, we'll start with some introductions. My name is Jenna. I am a district partnerships uh, manager here in the Midwest. I used to specifically just work with the state of Ohio. So all of you are very near and dear to my heart. I'm a former ninth and 10th grade English teacher, use Newzella in my own classroom. So I always joke that I am a huge Newzella fangirl. It was the only place I wanted to work when I was making the decision to leave the classroom. So excited to share all of that excitement with all of you today. And then, hey everybody, I'm Tyler Overstreet. I'm a learning engagement manager here at New Zella. I work primarily in the Midwest, um, work a lot in Ohio with Jenna. She'll refer to me as her assistant. I'm I actually will. not her assistant, just want to clarify that up front. Uh, but my role is the day-to-day -day operations at New Zella. So getting teachers resources, make sure they know how to implement New Zella, integrate New Zella into their classrooms. Uh, it was my first year outside the classroom, so definitely transitioning to remote life has been an interesting year. Um, but really excited to share with you guys a resource that I use pretty extensively um, in my classroom. I taught high school history in ELA. Um, so it's really excited to jump in and share with you guys today. Awesome. And you guys will understand why I refer to Tyler as my lovely assistant as time goes on here. Just flows nicely. Got to keep yourself entertained during these times. Anyway, what we really want to start with here, and I'm happy we have a little bit less folks on the line today, so hopefully we'll get some really strong participation. We did yesterday, so that was great. But what we really want to understand is we want to understand what secondary teachers need to successfully implement distance learning. So before we dive into showing you what's available, we really want to understand what do you guys need so that we can be targeted in terms of what we are showing you. So. There's a chat box. You can choose to take yourself off of mute. We do want to take some time to just have an open conversation. So we'd love to hear from all of you. This is a time when you unmute your microphones and, and speak oh. to the group now. <laughs> Thank you, Paul. Sorry. Sorry, I thought that that would be part of it. I guess one of the, um, I've been using New Zella quite a bit over the years. Um, I'm sorry, I'm Shelly Trapp. I'm in Little Miami schools and I'm an eighth grade intervention specialist. Um, prior to working for Little Miami, I worked with ED kids and um, have always loved to utilize Newzella. I love that I can use one article at different levels in the classroom. Um, so uh, I guess my uh, the biggest thing that I want to have a takeaway from today is as we go to distance learning and we're going to have to be implementing um, SDI, what's the most effective way for me to do it dis in distance learning? I've always been able right. to do it in the classroom, um, but also to be able to integrate it into my Google Classroom so I can um, do have individual uh, lessons for kids for, for SDI. So I'm pretty familiar with utilizing the program, 
but now having it compatible with my Google Classroom, I'm mm -hmm. working through that technology part of it. Okay, wonderful. So that's really a lot of what I would like to get out of this today. Okay, great. So in terms of what we need, we need resources that align with tools we're already using, such as Google Classroom, resources that are going to be helpful for all students that you need to touch on a daily basis, um, relevant resources to use in the classroom. Just saw that come in the chat. What else, guys? What do you guys really need during this particularly difficult time of educating students remotely? I'm an assistant principal, so I'm not in the classroom any longer, but I'm looking for this to be able to give me a better overview of what teachers have available to them. Got I don't it. have anything specific that I'm looking for, just an overview. Great. Anything else that anyone is really looking for here? Maybe resources that align to your current curriculum that you still need to continue implementing? Um, student choice elements so that students are staying engaged at home. I see some head nods. I'm a gifted intervention specialist with Little Miami okay. and um, trying to get that engagement and okay. trying to get the kids to, you know, be able to use their self-interest to further their learning. So I'm just interested in learning about how I can enhance what we're doing in the regular classroom for the gifted students. Okay, wonderful. Anything else that anyone wants to add here? I've got some good stuff written down that I think we're gonna be able to touch on throughout the course of this webinar. All right, great. So guys, the next thing that I want to do, since I'm sure we have some varying understanding of what is available with Newzella, I want to give you guys some background. So essentially what we do here at Newzella is we have over a hundred different content partners. So things like the Associated Press, National Geographic, the Washington Post, History.com. So a really diverse range of sources. And what we do is every single day, we select at least 10 brand new texts from those sources and we level them at five different reading levels from grades two through 12. So the goal is that we're providing content across every single subject area. We're increasing equity and access in the classroom because now every student is able to be a part of that conversation. And we're making teachers' lives easier by providing a one-stop shop for credible and engaging resources. So a lot of times I think teachers hear Newzella and they think news and ELA, but in actuality, we have primary sources, we have speeches, we have biographies, we have core content knowledge for science and social studies. Um, we have segments on careers and dream jobs and myths and legends, all of that leveled at those five different reading levels. So something to keep in mind. So what I wanna do right now is a little activity just to show you how powerful that this resource can be and what really hooked myself and Tyler to using this resource in our own classrooms. So I have selected President Kennedy's speech on race. And we are going to talk about how we can potentially use this in our classrooms and the power that New Zealand might be able to provide. So what we're looking at here is this is the speech as it was initially written or spoken. So you'll notice that on New Zealand's site, it is at the max level. You can see the word count and the text level right here. And what we're gonna look at is we're actually going to take a look at an excerpt of this speech. So. I wanna take two minutes right now and I want you guys to read this paragraph and I want you guys to really think about your students and how they would feel with this in front of them. So take two minutes, we'll gather back together at 11.15. Another minute here.
All right, guys, now we're gonna take an additional minute. So now we have the same paragraph, and what you'll notice is it has been leveled to an 830 Lexile level. So now take just one minute, We'll gather back together at 1116. I want you to read this and I want you to think about the impact that this might have on your students in your classroom. All right, as I'm scrolling through here, it looks like everyone is finished. So now I'm gonna ask for a little bit of participation again. What is the power of using something like this in your own classrooms or what impact does this have? It gets the gist of the, the speech or the, the context and brings it to their level where they can actually work on the comprehension and not yes. have to work through all of the language. Yeah. Uh, they're, they're getting what they need to get out of it. Yeah, wonderful. So those core tenets of what JFK was saying still exist in this leveled version of this paragraph. What else, what impact does this have on a classroom? I'll keep talking. If, but yeah. I, the thing that I have really found when I leveled these articles is that students who would not typically participate yeah. um, because they're afraid that they're gonna get it wrong or they don't quite get it, are more apt to participate and join in the classroom discussion when they're actually able to read at their level. Yeah, honestly, that's my favorite point that can be made here. Who's participating? Who feels confident in what they're saying to the class? Um, it just completely changes the dynamic of a classroom. Anyone else have anything else that they want to add regarding either the power of this or things that they're noticing? Assuming you can assign specific passages to specific kids, it creates a really good differentiation without a whole lot of work on the teacher's part. Exactly. That's a great point. And we'll talk about this a little bit later, but Newzella actually automatically differentiates for your students. So you won't even have to take that time to actually go through and figure out who needs what. The resource does that for you. And I know we're talking about gifted and talented students as well. Newzella also levels up for students. So if you are an eighth grade teacher and you have a student who's reading at a 12th grade reading level, they'll get this speech as it was originally written. And then that reader at a fourth grade reading level is gonna get it at the level that's just right for them. So the power in that too, both leveling up and leveling down. Anything else that anyone wants to add? General excitement about how awesome Newzella is? Um, yeah. Another thing to add is there's people who have not used it. One of the things that I like is if I'm in the classroom and I have multiple levels of the same article and I'm passing them out to the kids, um, it looks the same. The same pictures yes. on the front, the, um, the title of the article is the same. And mm -hmm. so when it's, when the kids are seeing it, they don't necessarily have to indicate that they're receiving something different. So yeah. it looks the same across the board. That's a great point. And that's something that's really important to us as well, especially at the secondary level. We don't want students to feel as if they're being given resources that were made for elementary students. We want them to feel like their opinions are just as important and they deserve the content that everyone else in class is getting. Um, so that's something that we really focus on. And we also actually rewrite each article at each individual Lexile level. And the reasoning for that is because we always want to make sure that the integrity of the content remains the same. So we don't want some computer program just taking out words and replacing vocab words. It's actually a human that's deciding what is the meat of this piece and how do we make sure that that is being offered to a student at an 830 Lexile level. And then we had a question in the chat too about a pre-assessment. So we do have a reading skills check built into the platform to kind of jumpstart that. 
uh, process of identifying where students are at. However, though, if students take it's roughly five quizzes and it can be five quizzes across the board in a science, ELA, social studies, whatever, um, we'll start identifying their reading level after five quizzes. But there is a reading skills check. It speeds up the process and gets you kind of jump started into identifying the levels. Great. So guys, these are the basic tenets of what Newzella was founded in. We are wholeheartedly a content platform, so providing really strong differentiated content for every subject area, for anything that teachers might be looking for in their classrooms. And basically what we found is that, oh, I'm going to turn and talk, we just did that. But basically what we found is that we were becoming the go-to resource for teachers for content. And we wanted to make it easier for teachers to find what they needed, to maybe even find unit plans and lesson plans that directly aligned with that. So back in January, we actually broke Newzella down into three new resources. So we now offer Newzella ELA, Newzella Social Studies, and Newzella for Science. And basically those are almost like digital textbooks that are updated on a daily basis. They provide curriculum complements, they provide unit guides, lesson plans, um, and they're really lending themselves to be super strong distance learning resources throughout this time. So this is where I kick it off to my lovely assistant, Tyler. See, it flows so nicely. And he's gonna walk you guys through what these look like. Yep, I'm gonna share my screen. Let me know if you can see it. Good to Let's go. See. Yep. All right. So all those things that Jenna is talking about, the articles every single day, the differentiated levels, the ability to quickly assign and differentiate for all our students, none of that's changing. So if you use Newzella, you're still going to come to this landing page. It's not going to change for you guys. The biggest difference that we're making is what Jenna just talked about is at the top of the page, we're now going to have ELA, Social Studies and Science available. And the difference between this and our old product was on the old product, you went, you searched, you found articles, you built out things within your classroom with those articles. And it really was a lot, it was all teacher lift. So the teachers were finding, they were building, they were assigning, doing all that. We took the feedback from our teachers, which is a crazy idea for an ed tech company to actually listen to what teachers need. And the biggest feedback was we don't have time to build out um, all these resources all the time. You know, just the day is too short. There's not enough hours in the day. Um, we need help with that. So what we did from that is took that feedback. We built out these new products to have those elements of, you know, content curation. So we're gonna have articles built around topics, themes, ideas, concepts. We're gonna have resources that align, standards that align, activities that teachers can easily adapt and roll out to their students. So what I'm going to show you is actually our ELA product. I'm not going to show you all three products because the same layout is going to be for all of them. Really just, it's one of those things you just kind of got to get on and explore high things within them. Um, but I don't want to turn this into like a 30 minute, just here's all the products, throw them at you. I'll make sure that we have time to ask questions. And then after I show you ELA, I'm going to show you also our distance learning elements that we're doing right now. So part of the feedback, we need resources that can be assigned digitally, but also resources that can be assigned uh, print version and other things too. So I'm going to show you ELA first and then I'll show you our distance learning tools. So here is our ELA tool. This is a brand new product just came out in January like Jenna said. It's still going to have current events at the top. That's not going to change just like the regular landing page. The biggest difference is going to be these middle rows and this left-hand navigation. So as you scroll down these middle rows you'll notice this is gonna be relevant content that's happening right now in the world. So this is always gonna be adapting and changing as we go up throughout the school year. Right now we have just for students, so really different ways to engage kids at home, you know, something to do, something to read, just really get them thinking right now. You know, March Madness Fiction, which is, you know, sadly was canceled, but you know, just <laughs> things like this that are relevant to what's going on in the world right now. For social studies, it's gonna be, you know, historical topics, we had a Hamilton, row going on the other day just to tie into the musical science it was like natural phenomena um, dealing with like storms and things like that so it's always just going to be relevant it's always going to be changing and adapting so stay tuned for that section of the product the biggest element of change is really this left hand navigation and this is where all the custom curation that we talked about is going to live so i'm going to dive into the distance learning um, after this i do want to highlight some elements of this collections 
how we divided it out, we really thought about like different teaching practices and activities. So like debates, research projects, um, pairing fiction and nonfiction, standards and skills based activities, and curated content around those. We also then curated content around curriculums that people are already using. So for example, Lucy Calkins units of study. What we did is actually match the scope and sequence of the reading and writing units in Lucy Calkins and added in articles, resources, activities to really just provide more depth and more entry points into those units for students and to help support teachers when they're um, navigating through those units. So you can see a lot of other ones, you know, and windows, we're all hill wonders. So we match up a lot of these different curriculums. And it's really to just like I said, add depth and add entry points for students into these curriculums that you might already be using. And then the last section down here, I call these like our ELA. Come down here, you're gonna be able to find articles about on um, fiction based articles. You're gonna be able to find articles that are organized by, you know, opinion writing. It's gonna be organized by different themes that you go through. For social studies, if you scroll down this bottom, it's gonna be um, built out by like contents so like US history, world history, geography, science is gonna have biology, you know, uh, earth science, things like that. And with all of this left-hand navigation, you're going to be able to find articles built around topics, resources, organizers. I'm going to show you an example real quick of one to give you an idea. I'm going to look into novel studies. So when you go into these novel studies, I'm going to choose high school level. And then I'm going to go with let's go. every year, juniors, Great Gatsby. Let's go into Great Gatsby. So within this, you're going to have articles already curated for you built around the Great Gatsby. It's going to provide articles that provide historical context, um, connections to like the theme, connection to current events right now. Um, I read this article every year when we read Great Gatsby, like what is the American dream as we push through the 1920s, look at the historical context, reading the novel. It really, you know, pairs up well for the next unit in the 1930s. So it's just all these different connections that you can build and it's already curated, it's already there for your teachers. And then on top of that, we add in this implementation guide where it's gonna tell you like, why, why these texts? What are the connections? And then here's some activities that you can do with students to connect these texts to the novel that you're reading. So it's already curated, it's already there. We're not saying, hey, you have to do everything word for word in here, but it's really um, providing resources and ideas and just sparks for your teachers to get started diving into the product and really diving into the contents that they're teaching within their class. So that's ELA. Um, social studies, like I said, is same layout. Science is going to be the same way. Uh, I will point out social studies because I'm a little biased being a former social studies teacher. We have these really cool virtual museum tours built into it. We partnered with C3 um, to build out inquiry modules, which are pretty good, uh, pretty great right now for like distance learning, like having that um, inquiry modules set up. So it's definitely something to explore. Science, we have all sorts of curriculum alignment, a lot of like at home experiments that kids can be doing right now too that are built in. So I'm going to pause here because like I said, I don't want to talk the entire time. That is the pretty much the basics of what we offer through products. We also have an SEL collection that I encourage people to dive into. A lot of great resources there, but what questions do we have about this before I dive into like the distance learning element? No questions so far. I love all the changes. I guess I, I, I do have one question. Um, I know that we received um, information that right now during this time, all teachers, anybody who logs in has access to all of yes. Zella. Do we have to do anything in our profile, change anything, or will it revert to that if I log in? I typically log in through Google. Mm -hmm. um, so will all of that platform show to me? Will I have to do anything differently? So Shelly, so I will post, oh, go ahead, Tyler. So when you go to newzella.com, there's an orange band at the very top of the page. Um, we've turned it on for a lot of districts in Ohio. Uh, I'm not sure exactly, I don't have the list in front of me. Um, but that orange band, you'll click on it and it's going to say, hey, if you're a teacher, sign up here to get, you know, access to um, all the free products. Jenna's going to give us, I think, the link, the yep. newzella.com join link that you can just click right there and it'll pull you into it. And you'll just sign in like regular. 
and it will automatically update your account. Yeah. Now, one thing to note for anyone who's on the line that thinks that their district would like access to this, if you want to share this information with district admin, we're able to actually turn it on for the entire district in less than 24 hours. And then honestly, the real benefit to that is we're able to just provide like really targeted district support. So we're able to do webinars like this that are unique to your district and your specific needs. Um, so I'll post both of those links. You can share those with the appropriate folks. And then it's just one less thing that you have to do and you guys do get additional support that are unique to your district. Any other questions about the product just before I dive into some of our distance learning elements that we're doing right now? On the, I have a question about the, you, you used a novel as an example. Um, can, can those things within that novel package be piecemealed as assignments or is it like all one package, create assignment and here's what you're doing with the novel, if that it makes can sense? Be slice and dice however you want it. So you can assign just one article, you can assign three articles, however you want to cut it up. Um, one of the things that I really pride ourselves at New Zealand and I, I, I really appreciate it is we're never going to tell teachers how to teach. Like you guys are the instructional experts, not us. It's more so here are our abundance of resources. Like we want to have them there and curated and ready to go for you. And then you guys know your students, you know what's going to work best. So if you want to piece it together, you want to take out articles, add articles, however you want to assign that and go about it, that's completely up to you. And we allow that functionality on the platform. Okay, thanks. Yep. All right, let's, uh, I'm gonna show you guys just real quick the distance learning things that we have built, and then we'll kind of open it up for like, what more can we do? How else can we help and support at this time? So. On every one of these products, ELA, Social Studies, Science, SEL, you're gonna see two things appearing. You're gonna see a distance learning activity tab, um, and you'll see a daily lesson in ELA, Social Studies, and Science. So I'm gonna open up actually the daily lessons to start with. Um, high school, we don't have available until next week, but this is something that new that we're trying out. So usually we don't do like day by day prescriptive lessons on new cell. This is kind of some, a new area we're venturing out to. Um, but with this, we have um, a day by day lesson plan of short, like 15, 20 minute activities that you can do with students that's cross curricular. So actually when you go to that daily activity, you click on week one table of contents, it pulls up this daily lesson page. It's going to give you an overview of the week and then each day it's going to have a 15, 20 minute activity that you could do with these different subject areas. So, you know, this could be for all different students. It could be for, you know, our gifted students, you know, here's additional activities that you might do, you know, try to do three out of the four or something like that. Um, so it's just another way that we're trying to support um, teachers at home is not normal working atmosphere. So it's much, um, we can build and actually have these resources ready we want to do and support because that's our role. So this is our daily lessons. These will come out every single week for elementary, middle, and high school. And then I'm also going to show you the distance learning toolkit. So this is going to have an ELA, there's a social studies one, there's a science and an SCL one. And this is just going to have pre-packaged activities that are both teacher facing. We're going to have parent and caregiver guides, we're going to have teacher guides. Um, different ways to support the student, the teacher, the caregiver during these times. And each one of these is going to be built out and have activities that are ready to go digitally and in PDF format. So I'm just going to show you one real quick. It's probably my favorite one. It's from the Let's Write collection. And you can see just different ways that we can engage kids in writing. But my favorite one is down here at the bottom. It's the 30-day write prompt challenge. So we've actually mapped out 30 days worth of writing prompts and we have articles associated with every single day. So, you know, just a free 10 minute, 15 minute, write, Get kids thinking, get them, you know, the brains going a little bit, you know, engaging in um, some content and it's already laid out, ready to go for the students. They just follow this. Uh, I actually create an assignment and push this out to kids. So just another resource for you guys. Um, to leverage. I know it's really hard right now. Some schools are saying like no new content, um, go and like review content. Some schools like high schools are doing more content. So we just want to find that balance and really provide different avenues for teachers where 
you know, here's some skill-based activities, here's some inquiry modules, here's new content that you can add. There's a lot of different elements that we wanna push out to people and provide at this time. So this is gonna appear, like I said, ELA Social Studies Science. It also shows up in our SEL product. Um, it's gonna, the SEL product I, I really love because it's really like, we pulled out topics like how to manage anxiety, how to stay in touch with friends, um, really relevant things that are going on right now in the world that we need to help support our kids with. And it also has like a caregiver element too. Like here's how you can support your kids with, you know, have a conversation with this topic. And here's how you can approach, you know, different ways of discussing these topics at home. So a lot of resources. Um, I'm going to kind of open it back up for questions at this time. Um, what questions do you have about the product? What questions might you have about our distance learning? Or maybe just New Zealand questions in general, general. Like, what can I answer for you guys while we have you on the line? I, real quick, and I'm sorry, I was playing around on the website while you were talking, trying to work along with you. You're good. I, the 30 day writing prompt, I'm sorry, I can't. How do I get to that again? I can't seem to find that. So, it, if you go to distance learning, learning activities, you're just going to open up a new page and it's going to be under the let's, I think it's let's write. Oh, okay. I was clicked on the wrong yellow thing. Okay. Great. You're good. Thank you. And then Tyler, I know some folks had questions around Google Classroom. So maybe yes. we can walk through that. Yeah. So let me show you guys real quick. Google Classroom is probably one of my favorite integrations just because it's usually seamless. Um, it's really very easy. If you have your Google Classrooms already set up, you've signed in with Google, all you're gonna do is you're gonna hover over your name. It might be your name, it might be this new fancy initial thing that we just added like two days ago. You're gonna to go to settings. Once you're in your settings, all you're gonna do is you're actually just gonna to go to your classes and then you're going to sync with Google. This is the same setup if you're using Clever, Classlink, Schoology. Um, I'm trying to think of any of the ones off the top of my head. That, that hits our big ones that we integrate with. You'll hit sync with Google. It's going to ask you like, hey, what classes do you want to import into New Zella? You'll choose the ones that you want. It brings your rosters over. That way you don't have to have kids sign up. They're already going to be enrolled in your New Zella class. So it's really, really easy. And after you assign articles, it's gonna give you a share button that you can actually pull the article and assignment back into Google Classroom also. What other questions might we have? It's a quiet group this morning. You're doing such a great job teaching, so. I don't know that. Now, now we have a dishonest group. Let's be honest. <laughs> Suck up. Right. I have a question. Yep. You can hear me, okay? I can. Okay. Um, I'm I'm a math teacher, and I'm also a language arts teacher, and I used to use this website. Um, years ago when I taught language arts, I love this website, so I do appreciate you all offering the, the whole suite, um, it, but it's been a long time since I used it, when I used it as a teacher for what was free. Um, I love how it's all set up now, broken out with the social studies, um, you just went away from that page there where it had all the links up there, for social studies and the science and the SEL, um, so I think this is a great thing for all teachers. Um, not just ELA teacher. Um, I love the fact that you're also calling it the new Zella and it's kind of going away from the ELA so that teachers realize it's not just for ELA teachers. Um, with that said, I'm, in, I'm in, interested more in the SEL. I, um, I just was like the lady I was exploring while you were talking before too. Um, when all of this craziness hopefully dies down and we get back to, and I don't want to go back to the normal education because I, I think this has been great for educators to change, you know, because uh, it's, it's, it's the system that's time for change. Uh, but when we do hopefully go back to a, it's school year next year and so forth, and the suite is probably going to be gone, 
Um, would that SEL be available to teachers in just the basic free? Or I, you probably can't even speak because you don't even know what's going to happen. Yeah, I, I can speak to that. I think for the future. Yeah, I can speak to that. So it the SEL collection is considered um, something that you can purchase as a standalone resource. So once this is all over and the thing that we can't speak to is when this is going to be all over, but when it is all over, then it'll go back to the system where all of our current events are still free to teachers, but you guys can choose if you want ELA, social studies, science, or SEL. One major change that we've made based on feedback from teachers and districts, you can just purchase the social and emotional learning resource as a district. That's good to know. Thank you very yeah. much. I appreciate fair it. question. Definitely a fair question. You, what you all are doing. I know it's, it, this is great. Thank you. And then this is actually, so real quick, our social emotional learning for social distancing. So we also have this set up just like those distance learning activities for ELA social studies science. We have it created. Here's what it looks like. Um, so things like for helping your family, my community, staying in touch, keeping yourself um, busy, managing stress, like we have all this built out with like also like family activities too. So to, um, to have these conversations at home. So this is also make sure you dive into that too. Has a lot of, like I said, very, very relevant topics that um, has to be stressful for our kids right now. Like it's just, I mean, I know my four year old is literally going crazy. Like we went outside to play yesterday and you would have thought that she had been locked up for several years. Like, oh my God, dad, like there's grass, there's a tree, there's a bird. Like, so I can only imagine what our older kids especially are going through and managing this. So definitely dive into our SEL collection. Any other questions, guys? Anything else that you wanna see a little bit more in depth? Um, we have about 20 minutes left on the calendar. We can either give you those 20 minutes back in your lives, or we can answer any additional questions that you might have. Um, the only other question that I would have, because you did a really good job today, is just as we start diving into this and playing with it, what is the best way to contact you if we do have Great questions? questions? And can you send, like maybe send that out in an email or a post or just let us know right now? So just pop my email address into that chat right there. You guys can reach out to me directly if you have any questions, or you can reach out to Tyler. Um, we are here to just fully support you for the next couple of months. That is our full-time job, basically. So. <laughs> mm. Anything else, guys? Any other questions? Anything you want to see a little bit further? Yeah, you did a great job today. Thank you. Yes, I'm being a suck up, but honestly, it was very good. <laughs> it was. That's what we like to hear. Well, thanks, Jenna, for a great presentation. And uh, I want to thank everybody for participating. Um, and once this video is uh, processed, I will go ahead and uh, throw this on the Ohio Distance Learning Association YouTube channel, and we'll send the link to that to everybody that registered. So if you have a colleague that registered or you, who said they signed up and they didn't make it, no, not a problem. We'll get the link to them available as well. So um, if they, as long as they signed up or you could forward that uh, to them as well. So um, I just wanna thank everybody again for being a part of our program. I'm gonna go ahead and stop our recording.